All right, hello. Hello, hello. All right, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, testing, testing. I am doing a test check. All right, I think everyone can hear me. Um, I'll give it a few minutes just for people to trickle in because I do think this uh, is an incredibly important talk today. Um, so I'll let people trickle in and then we'll get started, shall we? <clears throat> All right. Great. Let's let's start with a few things um, outside of the talk. So first of all, um, we're sending out a package to uh, the person with the closest guess from my last live. I couldn't post it because, um, quite frankly, the uh, the quality was crap, crapola. So I couldn't post it. Um, but the closest guess, uh, we're sending out a package uh, to you. And uh, Press Play Productions team is coordinating that. Um, I was in Greece, guys. I was in Greece. <laughs> Nobody guessed Greece. But I was in Greece. Um, M and I went for eight days. We were in Santorini for a few days. And then we uh, went to Mykonos for a few days. And it was just beautiful being there. Uh, ringing in my 30th birthday. Uh, shout out to the Myconian Villas. They hooked us up big time. Uh, it was beautiful. And uh, I'm sure you guys saw all of that on my Instagram, my Instagram stories and all that. And then uh, another update, what my first live, why I got braids, the cat is out of the hat. You guys know I got braids now. Uh, it's because I was doing a Rihanna's Fenty show. Um, they were kind enough to invite me to be part of the show. So I got to walk the runway, uh, model a few uh, Fenty, uh, pieces. So I had a good time doing that. And that is releasing on September 24th on Amazon prime. So, um, so that's, that's two things right there that, uh, um, I'm, uh, putting a closure to, uh, Rihanna's Fenty show. That's why I had braids. I like the look a lot. I think I might do it a little bit more often, especially cause, um, I don't have to, I don't have to deal with my hair. You just kind of wear a do-rag at night, you wake up, and you're ready. That's kind of what I'm doing right now with this with this bun. Um, and then, yeah, I was in Greece, guys. It was beautiful there. It was it was beautiful. It was uh, gave me some time to just look out at beautiful nature and, and think about what I hey, what we've done and so far. This is my third live. Action is unstable. I hope you guys. Um, I hope you guys can still hear me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope you guys can still hear me. That was weird. So um, what was I saying? Uh, 30. So we'll do what we are doing this week, what we do every week, live on YouTube. But I'm waiting to go live on all platforms at once. And I'm getting someone to help me figure that out. So hopefully for my next lives moving forward, they'll also be on Beta TV and they'll be on YouTube and they'll be on um, everything all at once. So we'll do today what we do every week, guys. And um, what we'll do is we'll start talking a little bit about uh, what we're talking about today, uh, the road to health and wealth in your 30s. Now, of course, this can apply to you if you're in 20s, if you're in your 40s, but obviously because it's a personal journey and I'm in my 30s, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the road to health and wealth in your 30s. So we'll talk about that and then I will head over to the section on the right and answer some questions and um, look at look at over uh, look over your comments. Look over uh, what you guys have to say. All right. So <clears throat> I want to start by going over the goals that I had posted on Twitter of what my goals are for my 30s and then go over to Instagram where I wrote a long ass caption that uh, maybe some of you did not read, and that's okay. It was long. But let's start with Twitter. All right, I'm going to read you guys what my goals were. We can kind of go through them one by one. So give less of a crap about what others think of me. Um, man, that's something that I think all of us go through all the time, and it doesn't really stop, does it? 
um, just giving less of a crap about what other people think. Uh, so much of our time is spent going about our lives, trying to manage the minefield of people's opinions and what they think. And um, even though, you know, I was in my 20s, I, I still struggled with that. And I continue to struggle with that. So that's one of the goals is to give less of a crap about what other people think about me. And it's, it's, it's everyone, right? It's not just your friends. I think I've gotten over that. I know what's interesting is that in my 20s, um, when I would say I, I give a crap about what people think, it was really geared towards my friends. Sorry, in my early 20s. and my late 20s, it just became more about people in, in, in my work my colleagues, I cared about what they thought. So it was less about caring what my friends thought because, you know, I knew my friends loved me for me and I knew that I was being myself around my friends. But in my late twenties, it became about my colleagues, people I worked with, um, right. The industry that I'm in, just caring about what they think of me. And I think it's a bunch of bull jive, uh, that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be working on that this next decade. Just be myself. And if you like me, you like me. If you don't, screw you. All right. So so that's the first one. Um, continually strive to be unapologetically myself to the fullest. I think that's a part of that first thing, right, is to just un- unapologetically be me. You figure out who you are and, and, and you're comfortable with who you are in your skin and you just be you. And if people like you for you, they do. And if they don't, they can go find someone else. Like they, they can go do whatever they want. Um, your finances and whether your things that you want to do. Um, so that's the big one as well. But if you have aspirations and goals, a lot of the time finances do affect your ability to be free. Um, and we're seeing it right now, you know, people, for example, I'll give you, I'll give you guys an example, people who fly private, and I certainly don't, I do not, but people who fly private on private airplanes right now in our world, they have a lot more freedom than people who don't. Um, and that's just one example of financial freedom. So we'll get into that as well. And then less material possessions only keep what benefits me long term. I've done this incredible thing the past few years. Maybe it's because when COVID hit, but I can't remember the last time I went out and bought clothes. Um, you know, just you know, like look at me right now. I'm wearing a you know a black T-shirt. This is actually from Ocean Rebel, so it's uh, it's it's my it's my clothesline um, that I designed. I'm not gonna go out and tell you to buy it because I'm just. <laughs> I'm just talking about keeping as less things as possible, but um, yeah, only keeping material possessions that that I really need um, or or really care about, um, and then take care of my loved ones more dynamically. Um, you know, for me personally, I've just gotten so caught up in in you know what I want to achieve in my life and COVID and all this other stuff that obviously I haven't been able to take care of uh, the people that I love in it as a dynamic way as I would like to, right? I don't, I don't, I'm trying to call people more. So that's something I've been trying to do is call my friends more, call my loved ones more, catch up with them. Even if I can't see them, just call them more. Um, and, and I'm just trying to take care of those people around me. Cause you've got to put effort into friendships that you want back. All right. So those are kind of the goals that I wrote on Twitter and, and what I want to um, talk about today. <clears throat> And then we'll go over what my Instagram post is kind of like a final recap of everything. All right. So here's what I will say about the first point. Give less of a crap about what other people think. Here's what I've learned in my 20s. It doesn't. And, and, and this kind of relates to the, the two parts, right? Relating to caring about what your friends think, your friends and caring about what your colleagues think. And then there's obviously other stuff, right? You can care about what, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But those are the two things. So first one, caring about what your friends think. Here's what I've learned about that. If you have to care about what your friends think about you, then they're probably not really your friends. There may be people that you want to be your friend, Wait, am I getting am I getting cut off here? You guys can hear me still, all right? 
because I'm getting I'm getting messages saying uh, connections unstable. I guess I should just learn to ignore that. I swear I have good internet. I don't know what's going on these past few times, man. The internet and everything. All right, you guys can hear me. I'm going to ignore this. So the first one is um, y- your friends, right? So if you have to care and, and actively think about what your friends think of you, then they're probably not really your friends. Maybe they're people that you w- desire to be your friends. Maybe they're people that you're unsure of the relationship with. Maybe it's all sort of all sorts of things, right? But if you have to <clears throat> think about what your friends think about you and you care about that, then maybe they're not really your friends or B, maybe you're just not confident in yourself. And confidence in oneself is something that we all have to work on on a daily basis, right? Loving ourselves, being confident in ourselves in who we are and what we have to offer to the world, right? So that's a kind of a whole other topic that we can that we can talk about later is just being confident in yourself. But it's just good, I think, to be able to clock like, hey, if I have to actively constantly think about what my friends think about me, then maybe I'm not actually certain that they are my friends or that they're, they'll, they love me unconditionally, right? So that's one thing. And the other part of that is caring about what your colleagues think. Sometimes that's really important because maybe you're in a business where it's important where what other people think about you right? Like, like the industry that I'm in, I'm an actor. So I constantly have people hiring me, whether it's producers or executives or studios. So I care about what they think about me because it can affect the jobs that I get. I think this one is a little bit more complicated because it's, it's, it's kind of a valid reasoning. There's a valid reasoning for that, about that, right? It's like, okay, well, I have to care about what they think because if they think poorly of me, they're not going to hire me. Therefore, I won't be working. Therefore, I have to care about what they think. Here's what I've learned about that. No matter how hard you try to guide people to think about you a certain way, at the end of the day, they're going to think what they think. Um, and they're going to make their own decision, whether you try really hard or try not at all, or you do this or you do that, or you gift people at work or, or you say nice things to them or what I've learned is just better to be genuine, man. Just be genuine, just be yourself and let people think what they think. Even when it comes to people that are hiring you, even when it comes to people, your colleagues, your employers, whatever it is, just be genuinely yourself. And people think what they think. Like I've met a lot of people in this industry that are really rude. They're really rude, but they work all the time. And I think it's because they're just genuinely themselves. They're just genuinely that person. They're not trying to hide it. So I think for me, what I've learned over the years is that it doesn't matter if you're rude, if you're nice, if you're sweet, if you're mean, if you're introverted, if you're extroverted. At the end of the day, I think people really respond to you being genuine. And as long as you're being the most genuine that you can be, people will respond to that and it will attract the right people, right? So let's say you're a genuinely upfront person, right? You just speak your mind really upfront and you say say how things are and it rubs people the wrong way. It's not going to attract those people, but it'll attract the, the people that that do like that, that are looking for, for that in someone. So what I'll say about that is just try to genuinely be all the time. You can try to be nicer. You can try to be meaner. You can try to be more mysterious, or you can try to be more likable. You can try to do a hundred different things. It's not going to guarantee a certain outcome. Anybody who tells you, here's the formula. This is what you do to, to achieve X. It's a, a bunch of bull jive. And I think that's one of my goals for, uh, in my thirties, I'm going to be using the word bull jive a lot more because I like it. All right. So that's that one. <clears throat> Reach true financial freedom. Let's talk about that a little bit. True financial freedom. Here are some of the things that you can do. Again, this is not financial opinion. Uh, this is not financial advice. It's just my financial opinion, what I've done for me. I don't care if you're 18 or you're you know, 48. What you should do to try to achieve that is is do the the really necessary smart things. One, invest. 
And I know a lot of people, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of people were saying, I don't have money to invest. I don't have this. I don't have that. Even if it's $20 a week, $50 a week, take that money and invest it. Put it in something that you believe in, whether it's a company you believe in, whether it's a crypto you believe in, whether it's, it's just find something that you believe in, that you use, that you know, invest in what you know, and put money into it. And that's called daily cost averaging, DCA, when we daily cost average. Every week, just put some money in, into something you believe in. And if you're young enough, I mean, if you're 18, if you're 20, if you're 30, you will thank yourself 20 years from now. Because even if it's fifty dollars that you're putting into a company you really believe in, it will it will grow. That's something that will grow, and that's something that will grow your wealth over time. So, fifteen years ago, people who were you know wearing Nikes and buying sneakers and and huge fans of Jordan, if you were putting fifty bucks a week into Nike stock ten years ago, twenty years ago, every week, you would have a lot of money right now. I'm not going to pull up the chart and, and, and see how much money you would have. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it really quickly. All right. Because I, I want to I wanna get this, this point across to you guys. Nike stock, uh, in 2000, right? In 2000. In the year 2000. Year 2000. That, that's 20 years ago, 21 years ago. All right. Well, in 1988, no, here we go. 2000. In 2000, the beginning price was 49, ending 55. So let's say 50 bucks. And in 2000, it was $50, the Nike, Nike stock, right? So if you were putting 50 bucks a week, it would have been like buying a stock every week for that whole year. You know, you would have had at least 52 stocks just in that one year of putting 50 bucks a week in, right? Nike stock now. It's 157. So it's tripled in value. So you would have tripled your money in 20 years. That's not even that good. But the point is, is that it'll, it'll grow. Your, your, your money will grow if you do that. So that's something that I think everybody should do. Um, try to find something that you invest in every week. The other thing you can do um, to help build your wealth and true financial freedom is don't spend money on stupid shit. Like I look back at when I was younger and all the money I was spending on on the dumbest stuff. If I would have saved that money and I would have deployed it in that strategy where I would have bought, you know, spent 50 bucks a week on something that I really believe in, then I would have had a lot more wealth. So number one is invest. Number two, um, build your credit. And in this day and age, you've got to build your credit to be able to do things like take out a mortgage or take out a loan, buy a house, things like that. Mortgage or take out a loan, buy a house, things like that. So I would buy having a recurring payment on your phone, on your phone bill, something like that, or just getting a credit card and starting to build your credit like that. Funny story, when I first moved to Los Angeles, even though I had really good credit in Canada, I had to rebuild my credit in the US because it just goes to, basically you're starting from scratch. So I actually had to get one of those credit cards where I I put money on it, like I put five hundred dollars on the credit card, and that was my credit limit, and I could only spend that. But I did that to rebuild my credit in the states because my credit from Canada didn't um, didn't cross over. So there's certain things you can do like that to to really try to build your wealth. Um, so I would say build your credit invest in something on a weekly basis. You know, it doesn't have to be a ton of money. It can be 20 bucks. You know, that adds up $20 times 52 weeks. You know, all of a sudden you're looking at, um, you know, a thousand dollars or yeah, a thousand dollars. So even 20 bucks a week, that's a good starting point. Okay. Um, what else? Less material possessions. We kind of talked about that very briefly. Don't spend money on stupid stuff. Um, try to save your money, invest it in an intelligent manner. And here's the other thing, invest in yourself, um, invest. So I'll, I'll let you guys in on something. Um, 
I don't know when I'll have kids. I'm not planning on it anytime soon. But when I have kids, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to be teaching them blockchain. I'm going to be teaching them coding. So invest in yourself in that, right? If you see something that it's the future, invest in yourself, put in the time to teach yourself that thing, right? So uh, I, I never want to say it's too late, but I wish that, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I would have started teaching myself code because that's the way our future is headed. Everything is built on code now. Going into the future, everything's going to be built on blockchain. So invest in yourself by teaching you kind of those necessary steps to make you advance in your life. So whether that's learning a different language, you know, learning an instrument, learning whatever it is, you know, for me, my example that I just gave code and blockchain, those are the things that I would invest. So invest in yourself. And believe it or not, if you do that, that's also going to help your financial freedom and, and, and that moving forward. Uh, and then taking care of loved ones more dynamically. All right. So those are kind of the general things. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing in order to do that stuff, right. To set up for my thirties. So, um, hopefully again, this is just, this is just my opinion. Uh, this is not an advice and this is what I've been doing for myself to set me up for that. So first off, financially, um, I put a link below. I don't know if you guys can see it in the description, but it's an app called Voyager that I use, and it's a crypto broker that I use. So if you sign up and you invest, I think, 100 bucks, you get $25 uh, free in Bitcoin, which who knows, five years from now uh, might be worth a lot more than 25 bucks. But what have I done to set myself up for my 30s? All the money that I've earned I've taken a certain percentage of that and I've invested that into things that I believe in. So that's been stocks primarily, real estate and cryptocurrency. So all the money that I've earned, I've taken a percentage of that and I've done that. I've either, you know, bought a a, a residential stock or I've bought real estate with that money and I've in that way I've invested in real estate and cryptocurrency, I've just been daily cost averaging uh, just investing into cryptocurrency projects that I believe in. We talked about that in the in the previous uh, previous in the previous live in the previous live that I did. Um, so in the previous live that I did, I talked about which cryptos, and then of course stocks and companies that I believe in. So for example, and again, this isn't financial uh, advice, just my financial opinion. You know, one of the companies that I believe in or that I've chosen to invest in of the future. Uh, is Joby, Joby Aviation. Joby Aviation are working on air taxis. They actually have prototypes out. Um, they actually have, uh, um, their air taxis have actually gotten approved by I think the Navy or, or um, I guess the Navy wouldn't make sense, right? The Air Force. But take a look in, into it. It's called Joby Aviation. That's one of the companies that I've chosen to invest in. Why? Because I believe that's a future. I believe that flying taxis are part of our future. And so people now, I, yeah, that's crazy. You don't know what you're talking about, yada, yada, yada. But the, I believe that's the future. So I'm putting some money into that. That's just an example, right? Whatever it is, you could think you could think cake is the future. If you think cake is the future of our world, then invest in cake, you know? And um, I'm talking about the food, not the, not the streaming service. Or Netflix, right? You think Netflix is the future. Whatever you think is the future, find some money and invest in that. For me, it's been stocks, cryptocurrency and real estate. Those are three things that I've invested in. And businesses, right? Uh, an article came back a while ago about how I invested in uh, plant power fast food, um, the vegan food chain. I'm an investor in that because I believe in that company. I believe in what they're doing. They're trying to basically be the vegan McDonald's of, of this generation and the next generation. And I really believe in that. I believe in what they're doing. I believe that the future is plant-based. Um, and so, you know, I put my money where my mouth is and I invest in that. Um, also what I've done, uh, you know, have less material possessions. Like I said, in the last, you know, two or three years, I've barely bought any clothes. Um, I've only invested in, in, you know, a few pieces that I really, really like that I know I'm going to wear over and over again. And there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason that Steve Jobs or Kevin O'Leary or Elon Musk don't put a lot of effort into their clothes and what they look like. And Steve Jobs, I think it was Steve Jobs who said the reason he always wore a black turtleneck was because it was one less decision he had to make that day, 
right? He didn't have to spend energy on what he was going to wear. Obviously, in some industries like mine, I can't do that. It's important for me to, you know, have some have some uh, fashion style, have some taste, you know, show people what I like to wear, and I and I enjoy doing that stuff. But I only do it on the big occasions, on a day to day basis. Uh, I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm wearing, and I'm certainly not going out and spending a ton of money on that. Um, so I've been very conscious of what I'm wearing, and what I'm spending my money on and clothes just hasn't been one of them. Right. So for me, it's been taking that money and investing it back or buying certain things that, that I feel are, um, are, are some sort of investment. So I'll give you guys an example. I've, I've never bought an expensive watch for myself. I don't, I don't, I don't have a Rolex or anything, but it's been a dream of mine to buy a Rolex. Um, and a part of the reason Rolexes are so attractive to me is because they're also a good investment. They go up in value over time. Um, some of them, some of them. So that's one thing that I would spend money on, right? I would spend money on buying something like a Rolex because it has an investment to it. And it's obviously a watch. It looks really nice. I think watches are one of those things that really pop out. Uh, you know, especially with men wearing suit wear and things like that, having a nice watch, I think goes a long way. So that's an example of, of not buying a lot of things, but when I do buy something, I put a lot of thought into it. And why am I buying it? Why am I purchasing it? That's one thing. Um, the other thing about that kind of goes hand in hand with that is don't live beyond your means, live within your means or actually live below your means. So Let's say you make enough money to, you know, go and buy a house. Well, maybe think about not buying that house, but instead renting, you know, live below your means so that you can save money, you can invest it. And so that your future self will be better for it. So that when you look back and you go, man, yeah, I could have bought a house and I could have spent all this money, but instead I saved it. I reinvested it into this other thing. And that made me so much more money than what I could have, you know, spent on a house. So live below your means. And that's something that I'm learning. And I've learned over the past couple of years is to live below your means. Um, all right. And the last one, take care of loved ones more dynamically. I've talked about this briefly. I also talked about it in my Instagram post about, um, <clears throat> it kind of goes hand in hand twofold. Um, the first thing is, I think your true friends, it doesn't matter how much time passes, you'll always be friends with them. You'll always feel like you're, excuse me, picking up where you left off. But at the same time, you do have to put effort into relationships that you want to keep. And that's something that I really learned over the past couple of years. I think a lot of people, obviously, during uh, the pandemic, they kind of got you know, they, they lost, they, people lost touch with each other, right? They didn't see each other anymore. They couldn't travel. So they lost touch with each other. And one thing I learned is, you know, I do have to put effort into friendships that are important to me, into friendships that I want to keep, even though I know that they'll always be there because they're my true, true friends. I've still got to put effort into it. And that life doesn't just revolve around work and what I want to achieve and, and all this stuff, but it also revolves around the people around you. You know, because life is a lot about community and, and you know, growing together. Um, and so that's one thing that I've really learned over the past little while is putting effort into relationships you want to keep and that are important to you. So one thing I've, I've started doing um, is that I've started calling people, you know, instead of listening to podcasts in the car, I'm starting to call my friends so that I can talk to them, reconnect with them, see how they're doing, touch base with them. Um, you know, I, I, I got obsessed with listening to podcasts in the car because I was, you know, I found them really intriguing and I was learning constantly, but, you know, I said, all right, I've been doing a lot of that. Um, I need to start touching base with my loved ones. And so that's something that I've been trying to do more and more often. I think, um, uh, it's maybe a progression of me getting older of like, I've been so career focused and so career oriented that, you know, that's great, but I, I need to put a little bit of time into um, other people and, and relationships and friendships because you have to. All right. So that's pretty much, you know, everything that that I talked about on my Twitter. Let me go over into my Instagram and I'll read you guys what uh, what I wrote and maybe I'll, I'll you know, say some more thoughts about 
you know, why I wrote this, what I was feeling when I wrote it. So 30 feels exciting, promising, freeing. What I learned works from my 20s. Your body is the gateway to your mind. That means eating well and supplementing appropriately. This one I learned right when I went vegan, right when I went plant-based, I started feeling like I had a lot more energy. I started feeling lighter. I started feeling less bogged down. And so I've learned over the you know six years that I've been plant-based that what you put into your body directly correlates to your mind right? Not feeling foggy. That's why a lot of people who are gluten intolerant say, when I eat gluten, I start feeling foggy. I, 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 I'm i tired. I'm lethargic. Because what you put into your body is directly correlated to how you feel and directly correlated to your brain. So try to eat better, you know? Try to eat more healthy food. Even something I'm doing, I've been plant-based for a while, but I've been eating a lot of processed plant-based foods, or, you know? Uh, processed burgers, processed chicken, vegan chicken, processed this, processed that. So I'm trying to eat a little bit more natural, a uh, little bit more whole foods, you know, how our ancestors would eat uh, back, you know, back in the wild. So unless you're constantly, you know, eating hormone free, uh, you know, grass fed beef that you're getting from your local butcher, you should 100% cut out meat from your diet um, unless it, you're getting it that clean. And even when you are, you know, just be conscious of how often you're eating that and just do what feels best for your body. If you say, no, me eating meat makes me feel fantastic. All right, good on you. Keep doing that. But just be conscious that what you put into your body is directly correlated to how you feel and how your mind feels. Once you do that, work things out in your mind, mentally solve your problems, envision the journey, the resolutions and the outcomes, then get to work. Um, so that's basically talking about manifesting, right? Just manifesting where you want to be in your life, what you want to achieve, how you're going to get there, just envisioning all that stuff and manifesting it. Um, a lot of the times we can get in a rut where even if we do that, um, and things don't come to fruition for a while, it starts to feel like, well, you know, I did all that and it's not working and you start really getting down on yourself. And that kind of leads me to another point here was, which is don't put a timestamp on your dreams. You know, don't try not to put a timestamp on things like I try really, really hard to be a musician for the next five years. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to do something else. If you really have a dream and something that you believe in and something that genuinely makes you happy every day that you wake up, don't put a timestamp on it because time is a, it's a fugazi, fugazi, it's a woozy, it's a wazi, it's fairy dust. It's not fucking real. <laughs> That's from uh, Wolf of Wall Street, Matthew McConaughey. But um, yeah, time, time is an illusion. It's an illusion. So don't put, don't put a timestamp on things uh, if you really believe in it. Um, expect nothing from no one. I don't even know if that's proper English, but that's one thing I've learned, uh, is just to manage expectations and manage, uh, how you rely on people. And the only person that you can fully really rely on is yourself. That's just the sad truth of it. Um, other people have lives, other people have things that they're dealing with every day. And so, you know, can you really rely on them if, if they have their own life and their own stuff that they're dealing with? You can rely on people, but you're not going to be able to rely on them as much as you rely on yourself. So always keep that in mind. Work smart and hard. This is important. Most people tell you to work harder than everyone to be successful, but this is only true if you're working smarter too. Yeah. This is something hard. Uh, you know, things will happen and things will come true and, 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 and you know, you just got to outwork everybody. Ah. So I heard a lot of that growing up and even recently, right? Like everybody talks, all the successful people come out and go, you got to work hard. And you do, no doubt. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from that. But here's what I will say, uh, because I got taught, if you work harder than everybody else, you'll be fine. And that's not really true. If I'm working my ass off, right, right here, but this guy's working a little less hard, but a lot smarter, he's going to get further in life than me. He just did like he or she just is. It's just it's just it's just how it is. Right. So, yes, you've got to work hard, but you've also got to work smart. 
And again, this goes back to something we talked about a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about me personally and how personally I'm going to start focusing on fewer things um, in my 30s. I'm just going to focus on fewer things and, and do them really, really well and work really hard. And that's a part of working smart, right? You can work really hard, but if you work hard at 1,500 things, the guy who's working really hard at one thing is going to be better at that one thing than you are at 1,500 things. It's, 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 just, it's just how it is. So that was important that I write that in there because it's something that I really learned and really just hit me um, recently where I was like, yeah, wait a second. It's not just about working hard. It's about working smart too. And a lot of people, when they get into their 30s, they're very intelligent people. So there's people out there who work very, very smart. And it doesn't matter how hard you work, you're not going to outwork them because they're working smart. So just keep that in mind. Don't buy the BS of just work hard and you'll be fine in life. Just work hard and you'll be fine, kiddo. No, you got to work smart too. Um, do a few things, but be the best at them. Just talked about that. One good friend is worth 100. Put effort into the relationships worth keeping. Lifelong friends will be there no matter how much time passes by. We talked about that. Your value is not determined by others. It's determined by you. Do not settle. Um, that's one thing that I, um, that I thought was important to put in there because a lot of the times when we're, we're working jobs or, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, right? Like we're, let's say you, you let's say you work in a corporate job and you really want to move up in this job and, and you're up for a promotion and someone else gets it. You start to devalue yourself. Like, oh, I wasn't as good as that other person. That's why they got the promotion and I didn't. They must be doing something better than I am. They must be worth more than I am. Don't let that stuff get to you. Don't let other people reflect how much you're worth. You know your value in life and you need to be confident in that value and don't settle. Don't settle no matter what. Don't let anyone tell you whether it's through their actions or their words, what your value is. You know what your worth is, stick to it. And if people don't want to meet that value, then it's all good. I'll go somewhere else. <clears throat> Make the best decisions you possibly can and accept the outcome. Learn from them. This one is uh, make the best decisions you possibly can and accept the outcome. Learn from them. Yeah, sorry. My brain is, my brain is glitching. Um, yeah, I think this one's obvious. You know, you're going to make mistakes in life. Your decisions aren't always going to be the best decisions. But as long as you kind of stick by them and learn from them, then that's all you can do. I um, I remember a couple of years ago, I um, I turned down a, a contract that I, uh, it wasn't acting, it was something else. But I turned down a, a contract that was going to pay me really good money. And I turned it down because I kind of thought, you know, I don't need this. I'm you know, whatever, like, I don't need to go and do this and go out of my way and whatever. And anyways, in hindsight, it was a really bad decision. But, um, you know, there was really nothing I could do to go back on it, you know, just being pissed off at myself wasn't really going to accomplish anything, it wasn't going to make the opportunity come back, it wasn't going to make the money come back. And so the way I kind of dealt with it was I just got to learn from this, I got to not make this mistake again, right? As long as you can learn from your mistakes and not repeat them, then you'll be all right. You know, the people I think who really get screwed are the people who make the same mistake over and over and over again, right? But if you make mistakes and you learn from them, you'll be all right because everybody makes mistakes. Everybody. Um, and then this last one is the hardest and directly correlated to the first. Do not spend time on negative emotions and thinking, anger, resentment, jealousy, greed, self-loathing, these are vices for a reason. Allow yourself and others around you to make mistakes. You are human and you can achieve anything. All right. So that one is really important. I spent a lot of my time in the last year and a half um, being very, just, just feeling those negative emotions, right? And not wanting to unfeel them, right? So all those neg negative emotions that we talked about, anger, resentment. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time feeling those things. And what I learned is that it, it's not good. You know, it doesn't achieve anything positive. You being angry, listen, you're human. You're going to be angry sometimes, but it doesn't actually 
do anything for you. It doesn't fix the problem. It actually makes it worse. And so don't spend time in those negative emotions. Don't spend time feeling angry or resentful or jealous or all those, those vices. They're vices in almost every religion in the world. And I think there's a reason for that. It's because spiritually or just, just yourself uh, on, a, on a personal level, we don't end up doing good things out of negative emotions. And even if we do, karma is a bitch and it's always going to come back to haunt you, right? If someone out of jealousy achieves something, I believe that that will come back to haunt them and bite them in the ass eventually. So don't spend time dwelling in negative emotions. I think that's an important one. And something that I honestly just just recently reminded myself of. I mean, even if you know these things, you can kind of get caught up on it, get caught up in it. And the thing about negative negative emotions is that um, it snowballs really fast. Like once you allow yourself to kind of live in negative emotions, it tends to just get worse really, really quickly. It's harder to be positive than it is to be negative. And that's why the news, the media, it's always negative, right? It's, it's easier to make people feel negative emotions than it is positive emotions. And so unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of people out there that always think resentment and things like that because it's easier to do that. It's harder to be positive. It's harder nowadays, especially to look at things in a positive light. So try not to be negative. Um, so, I mean, man, I just talked for 42 minutes straight, guys. Am I, I don't even know what I said. I don't know if I said anything helpful at all. <laughs> I hope I did. I hope, uh, I hope you guys took something away from that. Um, and, um, and found something that you can, um, you, you can use, uh, in, in all that. I just spoke for 42 minutes straight. God. Uh, thank you for the 60 people who are um, who are watching me uh, just ramble on for 40 minutes. All right, I'm gonna go back up through the comments and um, and see if there's something we can kind of discuss further um, and um, and see what you guys had to say because I really appreciate you guys coming on and and watching this and watching me ramble on saying absolute bull jive for 45 minutes. All right. There's someone who really wants to know if I know Noah Schnapp. I don't know Noah Schnapp. Sorry, I don't know if that's the that's the answer you were hoping for. Um, um, I love Under Armour. I do too. I wear Under Armour all the time. Well, that's the other thing. I've had the same workout clothes for a long time because I don't, I don't buy, I don't buy, I don't buy clothes really. So, hey, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is that the saying? If it ain't broke, don't. Yeah, that definitely is. I understand. Uh, all right. I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you very much. You talk important words. Thank you. Thank you, Rana. Thank you. All right, here's a good one. Birthdays for me are important because it's the moment I can go deep into what I want to change or grow because I'm a year wiser, which is a lot because it includes thousands of experiences. Yeah, I think birthdays are a great time to reflect. Uh, birthdays and New Year's, I think, are a lot of times the, 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 the events that people use to reflect. And I think if you can use it for a positive like anything, then that's great. Sarah says, can't stocks be risky business? I have colleagues who constantly tell me the stock market here in the U.S., but I'm always unsure of the risk. Yeah, listen, here's what I'll say about that, Sarah. Again, financial opinion, not advice. Um, stocks can be risky if you have a short-term outlook, right? So if you're thinking on to put $10 in today to make $30 tomorrow, that can be risky. But if you find a company that you really believe in, um, and you're investing for the long term, you have a few years of an outlook, five, six, seven, maybe 10 years of an outlook, it can, it can be a lot less risky because at the end of the day, you're putting your money into a business that you believe in and that you believe in not just a business, but an industry that's going to grow. So I'll give you guys an example. Electric vehicles are a great one. If you invest in electric vehicles now, um, 
I'd be very surprised if you regret, if you ended up regretting that investment. Now, I'm not going to say which company you should invest in or whatnot, but if you found a good company that makes electric vehicles, um, that could be a very good investment because electric vehicles are the future. We're seeing that more and more now. All the statistics are coming out about how combustion cars are, are, you know, electric vehicles are taking a big portion of business away from combustion cars. And even governments are, are now getting behind electric vehicles and incentivizing people to buy electric vehicles. So to answer your question, Sarah, it can be risky if you're, you know, if you're buying those penny stocks, you know, GameStop and whatever, everybody came out and was just buying, it's just a bunch of hoopla, mushmash that I don't know what people are doing. But I don't invest that way. I don't look at stocks that way. I look at companies that I believe have a future for the next 10, 20 years, and I invest in those. If you invested in Apple, you know, 20 years ago, you probably made a really good decision. Uh, same with Amazon. You know, funny story about Amazon. Jeff Bezos went to I think Harvard, and uh, this was back when Amazon was was a small business, and um, they laughed at him. Basically, they told him he should quit. He should sell Amazon and move on. That it was never going to work. What he was trying to do, he should. They they told him I think he should sell it to Barnes and Noble. Yeah, I think that's what they said. Uh, mistake me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe that's what they told Jeff Bezos at Harvard. They told him sell your business to Barnes and Noble. Um, this this business will never grow. Yeah, well, it's one of the most valued companies in the world now. Uh, because he didn't listen to the guys who were at Harvard. Yeah, <laughs> it's so hard to watch this live while I'm at work. But I hope you have a great day. You too, you too, Jaleesa. Yeah, have a great day. Don't get caught. Um, <clears throat> all right, two, 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 two. What else? Are you finished? I am now. What's the worst financial mistakes you've made? This is from Cleopatra. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Worst financial mistakes I've made. Um, one of the big ones I've I've sold too early. Um, I've invested in companies and then I've gotten emotional about it and I sold too early. So it didn't actually, my mistake wasn't actually buying the stock. It was selling it way, way too early and then watching it skyrocket because I made an emotional decision. Even after, uh, after an intellectual decision, I let my emotion make the decision for me and sell, right? Got caught up in, oh my gosh, this is it. It's and sold too early. That was a financial mistake I've made. Another one is turning down, uh, turning down, you know, that what we talked about earlier, turning down a contract that I don't think I should have turned down. Um, I think a lot of it is is actually the the financial mistakes I've made are actually doubting myself, right? It's like, okay, I knew it was a good decision. I made the decision, then I went back on it, and that's when I made the bad decision. Uh, because I'm a, uh, I have the personality where before I make a decision, a lot of time goes into it. I think about it a lot. I, I slice it every which way. And so I just need to trust myself more. So I would say, honestly, my worst financial decisions are when I've doubted my, my instinct and, and all the homework that I've done. Um, Food is definitely a commodity that won't ever die. It's a necessity for sure. Yep, absolutely. Um, Mina. Mina, I have a question for you about Aladdin. There was a deleted scene with you and Will post jam scene. I thought that scene was so funny. Why did the directors cut that scene? Uh, honestly, just timing. Um, they had to keep the movie, I think under two hours. So some things had to get cut really as simple as that. <laughs> uh, you should open evolving vegan restaurants. That would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's tons of restaurants and, uh, I've got some good news about evolving vegan. I'm actually going to be posting uh, a series of videos on YouTube that I think everybody's going to really enjoy. Um, and I'm really hoping that, that it, uh, oh, I really hope that people take something out of it. And it's kind of um, 
it's also a um a shout out to all the restaurants that were affected by the pandemic and had to shut down so i'm excited for those uh those videos should be coming out very very soon but they're evolving vegan videos and they're going to be up on youtube and uh i think i hope you guys enjoy them hope you guys enjoy them <clears throat> Yeah, Rebecca says, true friends are few. And if you're lucky to have a few, you have to cultivate it and invest in the friendships. Love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just Cleopatra says, just affirm, I'm powerful manifester. I'm a powerful manifester. Yeah, you gotta you gotta manifest and you gotta believe that what you're manifesting will come true. You have to believe that in your bones. And and one of the ways you believe that is just by doing it every day over and over again, right? If you start just saying like, hey, I want to be an astronaut and you say it one day, you don't really believe it, right? There's just something about it where you're like, ah, I don't actually believe that's going to happen. But you say it every day for, for 365 days for a year, you'll start to actually believe it. And not only that, but you'll be doing something about it by manifesting, but, but by talking about it and saying it over and over again. And then hopefully you, you take the next step and, and you know, you, you do whatever the next necessary steps are, but yeah, manifesting is a powerful thing. And I think, um, I think people don't want you to believe that it's true, but it is true. Anything is possible. I've seen some, some crazy stuff happen. Um, just, just, yeah, anything is possible guys truly, truly believe that if you believe that, then that's all you need. Because if you believe it truly, it'll happen. All good vibes. Yeah, all good vibes. From Peru, C. Fervar. Yeah, good vibes for sure. All right. Yes, Shivani, Shivani says it's all about the mindset too. Whatever thoughts you have about being successful or not, that's what will eventually manifest. Yeah, you know, I think right right after Aladdin came out, I um, I very funny and I've talked about this, but I very very ironically, I spent a lot of time just manifesting the opposite of what I wanted to happen. I just kept thinking all these negative thoughts, like I said, all these negative emotions of like. Oh, that was it. That was the highlight of my career. I'm never going to do anything big again, you know, and it just, just all these negative emotions that we talked about that you need to stop feeling, you know, anger, resentment, fear, all these things. So, um, and, and the more you think about those and the more you, you delve into those emotions, the more they come true and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so it is really important, Shivani, like you're saying, it's all about the mindset it's all about what you think and 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 it's all about what you put into your body because what you put into your body is going to affect how you think how you think is going to affect what actually comes to fruition so i that's why i'm a big believer it all starts with your habits right what you eat that's a big habit what you eat how you exercise what you manifest all of those are habits and you have to have good habits All right, let's see here if there's anything else. Anything else? Do you have a, a morning routine, a manifesting routine? That's a good question. Bethany asks that. Do you have <clears throat> a morning routine, a manifesting routine? To be honest, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, my morning routine just really consists of waking up early and going to the gym. And what? One of the things I've been trying to do at the gym is put my phone down. Um, I have a tendency to get to the gym, but then all the emails start piling in and I'm responding to people and it ends up not really being a, a efficient gym session because I'm spending so much time on my phone. So that's something that I'm trying to work on. Um, I would recommend you guys watch Jay Chetty if you want to um, get into a good morning routine. I've been I've been trying to learn from him about um, expanding my morning routine because I do think it's really important. Um, so, so to answer your question, it's really just the gym for me right now, but I am trying to expand it and, uh, manifesting routine. 
honestly, I don't really stop manifesting. I, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about, you know, where I want to be, where I want to get to, how I'm going to get there. I'm constantly thinking about that throughout my day. So I wouldn't say that I have a manifesting routine per se, but I'm just constantly thinking about it. And I'm constantly trying to work things out in my mind and solve them, right? It's like, okay, I want to achieve this. Well, how am I going to get there? What am I going to do? These are the steps I have to take. All right, I have to call this person. So I'll do that. I'll call this person first and then I'll do this. I'm a vi- That's kind of how my mind works, but that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. So some people just like, they like to go with the flow more. I'm a planner. So for me, it's like, okay, these are the necessary steps I have to take. This is what I got to do. Um, so that's kind of my manifesting routine, if you if you will. Um, all right, guys, we are uh, we are getting in on an hour. I think that's really long for a live, especially because I do want to repost this. So I'm gonna leave it here for today. Thank you for jo- joining me. But really quickly, just to kind of recap what we said, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s, whatever it is, um, the road to health and wealth. It all starts with what you put into your body. Make sure you eat foods that you feel optimize you. I'm not going to tell you how to eat. You know your body. You have to figure out how your body works best and how to optimize it. For me, that's eating more whole foods, uh, less processed foods. Everything is so processed now. So for me, that's where it begins with your health. Uh, There, try to supplement. Um, if, If you think that, you know, your hormones are off or, uh, you have low iron, whatever it is, be active, be proactive, do something about it. Go see a doctor, see if it's true. See if if you need to optimize your iron intake, your B12, if your hormones are out of whack, figure it out. And once you do that, it's right here, mental. Start to think about what do I want to achieve? How do I get there? What are the necessary steps? Envision them envision taking those steps, then actually take them and then go forward. Maybe you learn, oh, that wasn't the right step. You take another step, right? Just be proactive, do something about what you want to achieve. So that's that's that. And then for wealth, be smart. Don't spend money on stupid stuff. Um, find something to invest in, to re- invest in on a recurring basis. Um, you know, there's really smart investors, not me, but really smart investors say that you should invest a lot into a little. So don't diversify too much. Don't say, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to invest in this, I'm going to invest in this. Find two or three things that you really believe in. Maybe, maybe as a suggestion, financial opinion, uh, not advice, but maybe you find you know one cryptocurrency you really, really believe in. Maybe it's Bitcoin. And then you find one company that you really believe in and, and that. And then maybe you start saving up to buy uh, a small condo or a small house that you can rent out for recurring income, but start to be smart about your investments, even if it's a little, even if it's ten dollars a day, fifty dollars a week, whatever it is, just invest in your future and invest in yourself. We talked about maybe investing in yourself by learning uh, languages of the future, whether that's coding or blockchain or whatever it is. Maybe it is actually learning a different language, right? Uh, maybe the fat one of the fastest growing languages in the world. So learn that stuff, invest in yourself. That's when it comes to wealth. Um, so that's a quick recap of what we've talked about. I want to thank everybody that that come into my lives uh, every week. You guys are awesome. You give me a reason to do these. Hopefully you take something away from them. And um, I hope that you know I can I can give something to you that you can learn from and then you can actually see me implement it and see where I get in life by implementing these things. I think that's really important, right? A lot of people talk a lot of uh, a, a lot about what they, you know, how to live life and whatnot, but then you don't ever actually see how they're implementing it in their life or w- what they're achieving or where they're going. So um, hopefully I can do that uh, for you guys as well. And then uh, again, the Rihanna Fenty show, that's why I got braids from my other live that comes out on September 24th. Um, Greece was awesome. Um, and, uh, and evolving vegan videos coming soon. Those are going to be, those are going to be great. I'm really excited for those. And I think they're going to, they're going to affect people in a very positive way. So thank you guys again for joining this week. You guys are awesome. Um, and have a beautiful, blessed week and weekend. And, uh, hope you guys, uh, took something away from this. Bye-bye.